In section 5.3, we're looking at function notation. So our last section was about functions, and now we're going to look at how do I write something as a function. If you have an equation that is a function, such as a line, it can be rewritten as f of x equals 3x minus 7. So what we're going to be doing is replacing the letter y with the function notation f of x. So f in function notation is the name of the function, and the of x piece tells us that x is the independent variable. This is particularly useful when you have a function that has more than one variable in it. A couple other notes, f of x is read as f of x. This is not a multiplication. These parentheses are not representing multiplication here. It's representing what value you should plug in for the variable. So let's look at some examples. So I'm going to look at f of x equals 3x plus 5, and g of t, this is another function, this one's named g, and t is the independent variable, is t squared minus 2t minus 6. h of w, our third function, is w cubed. I want to find the following. So in part a, when we write f of negative 1 third, we're saying take negative 1 third and plug that value into your function. So into my function it goes, so my function is equal to 3 times x, that negative 1 third is going to replace our x, plus 5, and we're going to simplify. 3 times negative 1 third is negative 1, plus 5, so f of negative 1 third is 4. So I'm going to write that f of negative 1 third is 4. Now note, this tells me all in one line, this gives me the information of an ordered pair, because an ordered pair would list both your x value, your independent variable, and your y value, your functions variable. Okay, let's look at the next one. This one is g of negative 4. Again, g of negative 4 means take negative 4 and plug it in for all of the t's in the function g. So I'm going to have negative 4 squared minus 2 times negative 4, minus 6, so negative 4 squared is 16, negative 2 times negative 4 is plus 8, minus 6, so if you add all of those numbers up, we're going to come up with 18. So g of negative 4 is 18. This is not a multiplication here. We're not trying to solve for g. We're trying to simplify g of negative 4. In part c, we want to find h of negative 2. We're going to plug negative 2 into the function h for the variable w, since w is the input. And so we're going to come out with negative 2 cubed, which is negative 8. So h of negative 2 is negative 8. In part d, I want to plug in the expression a minus 2 to the function f. The function f was 3 times x, replacing x with the input of a minus 2 plus 5. So this was 3x plus 5. x has been replaced with this expression a minus 2. We want to simplify this. So simplifying, I'm going to get 3a minus 6, if I use the distributive property, plus 5, and then combine your like terms, so you're going to be left with 3a minus 1. All right, in part e, we want to find x such that f of x equals negative 2.5. If I remember my equation correctly, I know that f of x is the equation 3x plus 5, and I want to find out when this is equal to negative 2.5. So they're just asking me to solve that equation. This is how I would give directions to solve an equation for x, solve a function for x. Solve it like we normally solve an equation by subtracting off the 5 or trying to get that x by itself. So we've got 3x equals negative 7.5, and then we'll divide both sides by 3. I believe that gets you negative 2.5. Go ahead and check that in your calculator. And part f, we're going to do something very similar to part e. We're going to find w such that h of w equals 27. Let's go back and remember what the h of w function is. 
h of w is equal to w cubed, so we're going to replace our h of w here with w cubed. This is equal to 27, and we want to solve for the w value. So what number, when you cube it, gives you 27, or what's the opposite of cube? The opposite of a cube is a cube root. So if you take the cube root of 27, you're going to get 3. 3 cubed is 27, so our value for w is 3. Let's look at the next page. In example 2, the function y equals h of x has been drawn. Find the following. In part a, I'm looking for h of negative 2. Remembering that x values are inside the parentheses, this negative 2 they're telling me is an x value. So what I want to do is find out where that hits the function. It's going to be equal to the y value or the h of x value of negative 4. Okay, find x when h of x equals 5. I don't know x, it's going to be equal to 5, so I'm looking for a height value of 5, so it's going to happen over here, and I can see that that is an x value of positive 4. Part C, h of 0, again when the value is on the inside, that's the x value, so the x value is 0, we're going to go down and find the y value, that's negative 3. h of x is equal to 0, don't know x, that must be the y value, so the y value is 0. And you can see that that's going to hit two times. So there are going to be two answers here where I have a y value of 0. It's going to be at the x value negative 6 and again at the x value 2. There are two x values that have a height of 0. The domain. The domain was all of the x values. Okay, so the x values we went from negative 6 bracket to 4. And the range, the range was all the y values, the smallest one being negative 4, and the tallest one being 5. So the range is negative 4 to 5. Range isn't something new, it's something we got from one of the previous sections on functions. In example 3, we want to use the table to find the following. So these questions are very similar to the questions we were asked about the graph g of 4. 4 is the input, so 4 is going to be the x value. g of 4 is equal to 1. Okay. In the next one, g of 0 plus g of 6. g of 0 is negative 5 plus g of 6 is 4. So if you add those up, your value is negative 1. And find x when g of x equals negative 2, when g of x equals negative 2. I need to know the x value that goes along with that. So the x value that goes along with that is 2. That's how I can read a chart to determine function values. What type of function does g of x appear to be? Explain. Notice that your x values are increasing by 2 each time, and your y values are increasing by 3 each time. So if they have the same increase and the same decrease, I'm observing a slope right here. And a slope is a rise over run, the amount that's increasing on y divided by the amount that it's increasing on x. This is going to be a linear function. Linear functions always have the same exact amount of increase on x and y. It's consistent. These numbers 3 and 2 are constants. It changes by the same exact amount every time. Last example, find the x and y intercepts of the graph by hand. So we're going to do these in function notation. Recall that if I want the x-intercept, that's setting the equation equal to 0. So if I want the x-intercept, what I'm looking for is find x when f of x equals 0. That would be the way to write that in function notation. And we're going to solve the equation 1 third x minus 2 fifths equals 0. To solve, we're going to start by multiplying by the least common denominator to get rid of our fractions, both sides, of course. Multiply by 15. 3 goes into 15 5 times. 5 times 1 is 5x. 5 goes into 15 3 times. 3 times 2 is negative 6. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. And 0 times 15 is 0. Continue to solve. Add your 6 to both sides. 
5x equals 6, 5x equals 6, and if you divide by 5, you'll get that x is equal to 6 fifths. And so your x-intercept is the ordered pair 6 fifths comma 0. For the y-intercept, we know that if we want the y-intercept, you're going to plug in 0 for x, so you're looking for f of 0. f of 0 is going to be 0 minus 2 fifths, or negative 2 fifths. So your y-intercept is the ordered pair 0, negative 2 fifths. And that's it for the section on function notation. We're going to be using function notation as we move on in this course. You'll be more familiar with it as the sections progress.